Hey everyone, today on the bench I'm going to tie you up a big black beetle. Here's a big chunk of food, big chunk of meat for some trout. They're looking for these insects, these terrestrials, when they come blowing in the water or accidentally fall in from off a tree or something. They they'll key in. They like these. Lots of lots of food here. So um, let's get ready and get one tied up for you. To start, we'll go over the materials we're going to use to tie the fly. Here I'm showing you is a uh, low water salmon hook. It's a size 8. You can go to quite a few different sizes with this. You could use uh, foam for the overbody as well. That's pretty easy to work with nowadays. I prefer using my body and my shell back. Here's some nice um, black yearling elk. It's very fine texture, nice and shiny, it's strong and quite buoyant as well. Now for the main body I'm going to use for the, the sheen here, I'm going to use some bright green strung peacock hurl. That is really nice material there. And to accent that I'm going to put in some dark green, kind of an emerald green crystal flash. And then for the um, indicator on there or we're just going to use some fluorescent chartreuse little pair of posts up here just a little easier to see. You might want to throw this one a long long way into the bank sometimes. Those fish would be feeding there in the evenings or whatever they're coming in looking for for food. Them big trout that's when you want to be looking at them with this fly for sure. Some days when nothing's going on just grab a a beetle or something like that, an ant, and see what happens. You'd be surprised. I know a lot of us never use enough of these terrestrials. I was one of them for many years. I, you know, there's just really there's so many flies out there. It's mind-boggling, and so many hatches, and that's what consumes us for a lifetime. Trying to figure this all out. Still water puzzle, and then you can use this on lakes and rivers, wherever. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start here. Uh, I've got thread base on the hook. I'm going to grab my elk and I'll grab a cut that off right at the patch. Get a nice, big, generous piece of elk hair. It's very fine. Bought a lot of my hair from Rocky Mountain, I believe it was. And they have some really good hair. Make sure you there's so many types of hair out there. They all have their reason, their purpose. Get my hook in the in the vise a little deeper there. And we want to line our tips up. Some stuff left on the bottom of that packer look like. Stacker I should say. Now what I want to do is have my body from the eye back to the bend here. Then the front is going to come back as a shell and then the front will be the legs. So I'm going to pinch it on about right there. Get some soft turns. I'm just taking some soft turns in here. I'm not putting a lot of heat on this right now. I just want, don't want to build up much bulk. Or take this bulk away. I want it, the buoyancy of the, the hair to help me. With this pattern, I'm, I can take it around the corner a little bit too. There we go. Now I'm just going to come in here and trim these butts loose. If you're concerned about it rolling around on you or not tight enough, it seems a little too loose, put some uh, cement on that shank when you put that on there. I, I don't use a lot of cements in that when I'm tying my flight. It's just, I, it's messy. <laughs> I get it all over me and it's, it's going to roll a little bit. I mean it's a little bit loose, but that's okay. That's going to give it some buoyancy because I'm not using foam. I'm going to use the, the hair to make this float. So we're going to come in. We're going to grab a bunch of our peacock hurl. Make sure there's anything short. Get it out of there because we're going to make a long peacock rope. There's a short little straggler. Tie that in at the back. And then it looks pretty good. Here's one that's not quite as long as the other one, so I'm going to take it out because it will see the, the butts of that show up a little bit later. So Mike Lawson showed me this a few years ago. He was tying a beetle and he threw a little crystal flash in with a peacock curl when he rounded it in the rope and give it a little 
glistening it it looks really good so I've been doing that it's, it's great Mike's an awesome fly tire that no hackle fly of his is amazing I'm still trying to figure out how to tie that one okay so we're just going to do a nice little peacock rope and we're going to wind it over the top of the butts of the um, over top of the hair here. There we go. Make sure that's tied down good there. We don't want that coming apart on you right there. Bit of a shape, a little fatter in the back. A little thinner at the front. That's good. The shape you're looking for. And you can tie this in lots of different sizes. You can go down smaller too. There's so many different variations of beetles. But they are. I'm coming over the top with my shell back. And I'm getting some good turns here. This is now I'm gonna bind that down. I'm gonna put a little heat on that now. That ain't going nowhere. Nice shell back. You can see that crystal flash doing its thing on you with that now, eh? Now I'm gonna come in with our indicator here. Or our Make it a little easier to see. This poly yarn is really nice. I'm just going to split it. I don't want too much. Come in here in half. Pull it back. Just clip that on top. That'll help you when you're throwing them long casts. When you're fishing the banks, you always need to throw long casts. Now I'm just going to pull this back. That's my legs. I split it. That split pretty good. I got about half on each side. I'm just going to take a lot of turns here. I'm going to build a big thread head. And we get right behind those, right where I get those tips. That'll kick a little bit too. Not very pretty up there. It's a little longer than the legs on the other one, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. And tie that back. This soft hair, I can work with that. I'm spending a little time up here. I want to get that head nice and tight and thread back, get them legs back a little bit. So I'm winding right back underneath it now. There, now it's laying those legs where they want to lay back naturally. That's perfect. I like that. It doesn't have to be super pretty. This one ain't going to win a beauty contest, but it will sure get the attention of the hungry trout. But like I was beginning to uh, just tell you there a minute ago, was these big fish will come in, the best fish in the lake, feed at night. And they'll come in tight to the shore. They're not going to do that during the during daylight hours when the eagles are out looking for them and, and so forth, and they're, they're not you know, it's just too shallow, they don't feel safe, they won't come in there. But the evenings, they're going to come in there tight. So you get in there where you can get as long a cast as you can throw and get that to the beach. You want to stay away from that shoreline as, as much as possible. So that's why, that in, that's why I've got that little bit of chartreuse up top there so you can see it. Not that it's required because you'll see when those fish eat that, that's going to be pretty evident. They'll, they'll hammer it. That's a, that's a nice chunk of meat. It'll float all day. If you want to make it a little more durable, take some flex cement, put it on the shell back there. That'll help a lot. And if you've got a bunch of these with you and they get chewed up a little bit, you'd be surprised the fish eat them even a little more. They don't. Yep, yeah, that's good. So. All the best for that one. That's something you don't see a lot on the on the bench segments, probably, or or in fly shops or whatever. But it's a really, really good uh, food item there, and go about half that size or two or three sizes in your box. I wouldn't put a couple dozen of them in there or whatever, but 
make sure you got four or five or six of each and uh, because you're going to have some buddies coming over there. If they're not in and drinking beer at the campfire, they're going to come over and want one of these beetles when you're catching all them big trout. wonder what's going on. So all the best. Uh, catch you next time. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.